All right, what up, tubers? Um, ended up having a problem with uh, another one of my subs here. Um, one of the terminals here. I don't know how well this video is going to come out. And I'm, excuse me for the poor video quality. I'm one of the ones that probably bitches about it most here on YouTube. I'm sure I hate fucking cell phone videos. But I lost my camera, so um, this is going to have to stop until I find it or I go buy a new one. So anyway, as I was saying, um, you guys have seen my other videos before of me pulling apart the uh, the Type R subwoofers. This is a 12-inch uh, SWR 1222D. Um, now, the leads, if, if you look at my other video, you'll know that the leads are actually stitched on the top of this bottom spider here. So there's two spiders, one on the bottom, one on the top, right? It's actually stitched to this top one right underneath these little these little rows right here. I don't know how well this is going to come in, but I'm going to try try for it anyway. Um, anyway, well, so one of my coils opened up, right? And uh, I've pretty much figured out how to take this sub apart. You can see that there's five screw holes for the actual spider landing. And what you do is you just peel off the surround and the cheap-ass glue that Alpine uses, which is fucking junk, because I've, I've had them come apart on me a couple of times now. Um, you peel that glue off, get the surround off, being careful not to actually separate the surround from the cone itself. You want to be real careful with that joint, because once that starts coming apart, you're going to have problems. So anyway, peel that sucker off, get all the glue off, put some uh, alcohol on there, you know, make sure there's a nice clean surface to re-glue back onto, otherwise... Uh, Otherwise, you'll have problems with glue, too. And uh, you're not going to want to use epoxy. You're going to want to use, like, a CA glue. Um, I found that stuff holds way better. Epoxy tends to flake and film off. Or, like, it gets, it, you know, puts a... It's just too smooth of a surface. I mean, if you roughed up the surfaces with some scotch Brite or something and then cleaned off the, the, the sanded material um, from the actual out, outer part of the basket, um, you'd probably be okay, but even then, I mean, uh, epoxy is good stuff, but the CA glue for, for just pure strength is definitely where it's at. So anyway, so I pulled apart this, this thing, uh, figuring that the coil opened up, and you can see it's pretty dark. Um, this is one of the subs that I've had for a long time, and I've beat the holy fucking hell out of this thing. But it still works, and there's nothing wrong with the dark coil, as long as uh, the epoxy keeps the wires separated and uh, doesn't short to another another coil winding that's in there which this subs actually perfectly okay um, both the uh, both the coils test out to um, to uh, around two it's like 1.8 1.8 um, ohms per coil DC resistance so anyway well I had a problem with coil opening up thinking that you know one of the tinsel leads had bent back and forth so many times that it broke well when you go to pull off the cover here let me go grab Give me a second here, guys. Let me grab the cover here. I've got this little plastic cover that goes on this bitch. All right. So there's a little cover when this guy's sitting in the basket. Okay. So landing's in. Seated all the way around. Pretty much looks like a new unscathed, unmolested 12 inch Type R. Almost. If I can get this fucker to snap in. There it goes. Okay. So, anyway, so that cover's glued on. What ended up happening was I pulled the sub apart thinking that it was done, you know, which was pretty stupid when I could have just pulled this cover off. So, I wouldn't have been able to get in there with a screwdriver anyway, so I kind of had, had to pull it off, but. There's ways you can weasel it. Take a bit, you know, a Phillips tip bit, and uh, some 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 kind of channel locks or pliers or whatever. But if you look closely, I don't know how well I can. You know, once again, <laughs> I don't know how well you can see it, but if you look closely, there's a screw. There's a little button head screw, um, a button head Phillips, and there's a little tab that the actual uh, tinsel leads, the flexible tinsel leads, solder to, and what ended up happening is that screw, I've been beating on these things for so hard and so long that and they did put glue on them to hold them in place when they were tightened from the factory, but it came loose, and the glue wasn't broken, so it just rattled back and forth so many times that it opened up the gap a little bit and caused it to, uh, caused it to uh, open up the coil. 
So this woofer is actually in still perfect condition. Uh, I'm not going to throw it away or get rid of it or anything. Um, I'm going to end up gluing the surround back on with some CA glue. Um, clean the underside of the rubber with rubbing alcohol. Clean the basket with rubbing alcohol. Make sure those, con those uh, surface surfaces are absolutely free of any kind of oil or fingerprints or anything. That way the glue adheres um, as best as it possibly can. But uh, I just tightened up those little guys right there and fixed my problem. So for those of you that have problems with these Type R subwoofers, you know, thinking that your coil's open, don't go throwing the woofer away or wrecking them yet because uh, chances are pretty good that it's, it's probably salvageable. And I had the same thing happen to that other woofer that I fried, the brand new one, put it in a box, slammed on it, beat on it with about 700 watts-ish or so, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, I don't know. Didn't clamp it or anything to see. Next time I'm going to, though. Um, and I ended up fucking roasting that sub because I thought one of the tinsel leads was fucked. Well, I bet you this is probably the problem. So, just saying, just wanted to make a quick video for you guys. I know it's fucking horrible quality, but, hey, it's better than nothing, right? Gives you a little something to work with. So, anyway... These subs are like modular in design, so the easiest way that I found to do it was just take off the surround, just the surround, being careful not to mess up that uh, cone to coil, or the, the cone to uh, surround um, joint. And then um, this little plastic cap is glued on. You can see the glue residue, hopefully, just, just slightly. You can see a little bit. And uh, this little cap just kind of pops on. It's got two little nubs that see, you want to seat it in. Um, from the from the closest point to the coil first, and then it just kind of snaps on there, and, and they did put a little strip of glue to hold it. Well, if you pry on it a little bit with a screwdriver, um, it'll actually pop right off. I used a razor blade, and because uh, I didn't want to scratch it up, I'm real particular about stupid shit like that. But anyway, so uh, so here's a perfectly good salvage Type R, and for those of you that wanted to see the voice coil, you can see how thick my thumb is. Look at how thick that actual aluminum former is. It's pretty gnarly. These voice coils actually aren't really too much of a joke. I mean, they look like they can take some pretty burly power. I mean, they're not really big in diameter, but the wire's fat. And uh, the former's freaking, it's heavy duty. I mean, fuck, I didn't... My other subwoofer that I blew, um, I don't remember it being that thick, but I fucking cased that thing out so hard that it, uh, it got ruined pretty easily. But almost appears like it might be bent... Um, it's got like a flange on it to protect the coil. I don't know. Fuck, this camera, cell phone camera sucks ass, but almost looks like it's there to protect the coil or to give it some kind of rigidity at the bottom for when it bottoms out and stuff, just to give it some, uh, some strength. But anyway, so, uh, type R repair. Before you go throwing away your subs, when one of the coils opens up or when it stops working, double check those connections. Phillips screwdriver and uh, just torque them all down, you know, not all crazy, because I believe it threads into plastic, but just torque them all down a bit, you know, just make sure they're nice and snug, so they don't come loose on you again. So, I'm going to put this guy back in the truck, and um, I'll probably film a video of it working a little bit later, just to show you guys, you know, make sure that I ain't bullshitting you, this thing actually does work. Um, so, yeah, anyway, Type R Repair, there you go, guys. Hopefully it helps.